Good afternoon, Keepers of the Cash. Gary B, the Casual Comic Guy here. I hope everybody is having a great Father's Day weekend. Hope you're getting to hang out with your family. Hope you're not working too hard. But today is Saturday, and you guys all know what that means. Savage Saturday Comic Review, and this is episode 27. I can't believe I'm 27 episodes in, but here we are. Today, we are interview, uh, interviewing. We are reviewing. I haven't gotten any smoother in 27 episodes, I know. We're reviewing... Iron Shadows in the Moon by Blaze Comics, their adaptation. And uh, this is one I'm pretty picky on because this is one of my favorite Conan stories. And I know, it seems like I say that about all of them. But I just really love the Robert E. Howard Conan stories. And you guys have known, I haven't liked one of Blaze adaptation yet. I don't think the adaptations have been good. Rather, it's been the art that's been the issue, or the storytelling, or throwing in something gratuitous that doesn't make sense to the story, so they can be viewed as the uncensored version of the story. Just stay true to the story, and we're good. And I am pleased to say that, for me, they finally got it right with this adaptation. So, Iron Shadows in the Moon, they had solid art. I'm going to give the art an A+. plus. It was really good. The covers are all going to get A pluses. I really like the covers. So this was a writer and artist, um, Virginie Augustin. And uh, I thought she did a really great job. Uh, the lettering I thought was really good in this too. And that was by Desi Sienti. And just really, really enjoyed this adaptation. And I haven't said that about one Ablaze adaptation yet. And as normal, I've probably already been doing it, but... I'll be showing you images over here but this this was real solid so the story begins uh, with this woman Olivia who's on the run she escaped uh, this guy named uh, Shaw Amaroth and he's a ruler and he had just wiped out the uh, Kozakis who were being led by Conan the Barbarian Conan's the last survivor Olivia is on the run. She escaped the palace during their uh, drunken celebration and was trying to escape before he used her, abused her, and ultimately killed her when he was done with her, right? Uh, so she's nothing but an object for him to use. She's got plans to survive, and she's just on the run. She's playing it by ear. And he finally catches up with her. Uh, his army is still behind him on the way. He had pulled ahead of him. And just as he's about to grab her and take her, our hero Conan comes out of the reeds. And there's a fight, and Conan gets the revenge for all his Kozakis that died and, and kills Shah Amra. But then they're presented with a problem. They know the army's on the way. They gotta run. Conan had a boat stashed away, and they take off. She goes with Conan. She doesn't know anything about barbarians or um, what she considers savages. But he did just save her, and it's go with him or get killed by this army and who knows what else, right? So they take off. They pull into this island that they're going by, and Conan just plans on rowing and rowing and taking his chances at sea. What's going to happen is what's going to happen. or out in the water. So they get to this island, and he pulls up. And, the, and then the story just starts going really well from there. There's this presence in the trees as they're trying to make their way towards shelter and find out what's going on. Giant boulders hurtled at them. Uh, so they're forced to seek shelter. They can't see what's in the trees. They can't see what's attacking them. And they come across this temple. And in this mm -hmm. temple are all these iron statues of this race that neither one of them are familiar with. And Conan knows that they can't go out and camp on the beach. Uh, they have to, you know, the boat's hidden. They have to hope that the armies who are in pursuit of them don't find them there. So he says, we've got to camp in these ruins. It's just iron statues. Don't worry about it. Uh, but while they're sleeping, she has this vision, this dream that the, she's infected with. And it shows these creatures that are the statues in their, in their regular live form. And they're killing this kid who's a, who's a son of a god. And the kid dies and you see the father, the god, the main god, show up. And he punishes all them. And you come to find out that they can only be resurrected and they only come to life by the moonlight. 
So it's not actually safe to be there. Uh, she wakes up. She tells Conan about it. Says we gotta go. It's getting towards morning. Conan's like, all right, we gotta set off anyway. And they only return to the beach to see that their ship, their boat is smashed. And then they spot a pirate ship coming. So they're forced back inland again. Uh, from there, the pirates land. Uh, Conan ends up getting in a fight with their leader um, of the Red Brotherhood, and uh, he slays him. And by all rights of the Red Brotherhood, he should be their new commander. Uh, but he is knocked out by a, a, a well-thrown rock. He is taken um, taken into imprisonment and tied up, and they're camping at the ruins overnight. Uh, they don't want to take their chances with whatever's in the jungle either. And just a real satisfying story. Um, it gets crazy from there because Olivia had escaped. She had snuck back, and she uh, frees Conan, and her and Conan are trying to make their way out. When the ape attacks again, it, they find out it's a giant ape uh, of this rare breed, and it's it's gigantic. Conan, uh, Conan luckily slays it, and um, they're making their way towards the beach, and they can hear all this just cacophony of noises, right? And something's happening back at the camp where the other pirates were there and uh, it's not good. The creatures came alive and there's a, there's a whole slaying going on. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how it ends. It's a really good read. It's the first adaptation from them I think they got right. And so far, every adaptation of this story, whether it was through Marvel, Roy Thomas, um, over at Dark Horse, I've enjoyed every adaptation. This just seems to be the one story everybody gets right and it's a great one. Um, so I would definitely give um, give the art, the first art I've really been pleased with, A+. Plus. Covers, we'll give an A. Um, the writing, I think, was an A+. Plus, and I've thought the writing was terrible on all of them so, so far. So this one really impressed me. Like Again, the writer, Virginie Augustin, did a fantastic job. It's uh, the truest adaptation they've done so far. And that's why I enjoyed it so much. It was just... No BS. Let's take the story. Let's put it in visual comic form and let's tell it. And uh, it was great. So conclusion in this too, also in A+. Just uh, fantastic three issue arc all around. Really enjoyed this one. So finally, I get to say great job of Blaze. I stuck with you through all the other ones. It finally paid off with this one. I hope the next one's the same. I hope I enjoy it as much as I did this. So uh, this is the first of Blaze imprint that gets a thumbs up for me and uh, two casual thumbs mm -hmm. up. And that's all I got for mm -hmm. you this week, guys. Mm -hmm. Hope you're enjoying these. And until next time, keep it casual.